Happy Trekoween! In space, no one can hear you complain in the comment section about the jokes. Star Trek is not traditionally a holiday type show of any kind. Are you really afraid of me? I am not. I am deeply jealous that I never got the chance to but it certainly had some horrific episodes, not the least of which being the one where Neelix dances and they zoom in on his bare feet. But in 1967, the original series did in fact do a Halloween episode. And the great thing about the 60s is nobody gave a crap. You wanna put wizards and giant black cats in your space show? Sure, that fits. Whatever your feelings on current Trek, you can be certain you will never see this premise on prestige television. And that's a shame. If we weren't missing two officers and a third one dead, I'd say someone was playing an elaborate trick or treat on us. Ketspa! This is actually a landmark episode of Star Trek in several ways. This was the first episode filmed of season two, and therefore the first they made with Chekhov. Therefore, therefore, the first episode featuring all of the classic crew from the movies. The last episode featuring a fan favorite, Lieutenant DeSalle. The only episode where Sulu doesn't speak, the first appearance of a scope on the engineering section of the bridge, the start of several changes to the opening credits, and most importantly, the first time they used Chekhov's horrible monkey's wig. I would be remiss if I didn't also mention the script, written by Robert Block, who famously penned the novel Psycho. Like the other two episodes of Star Trek he wrote, the novel unfortunately does not include any space wizards. Enough trivia, let's get to the goofy stuff. All right, so a landing party of Scotty, Sulu, and Dead Meat have been on whatever planet they're exploring at the moment, and they haven't checked in for a while, and Kirk is a bit concerned about it. They finally get through to Dead Meat, who asks to beam up alone, and I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Jackson, where are the others? My god, no, no! Not Jackson, no! Is there nothing this show won't take from us? Something has gone horribly wrong. Just listen to this spooky message they receive from a disembodied voice. There is a curse. Leave this place or you will all die. Nobody tells Kirk what to do. Seeing as his third and fourth in command are still on that planet somewhere, he beams down with his second in command, therefore leaving fifth in command, Assistant Chief Engineer Lieutenant DeSalle in charge. <laughs> Hell yeah, bringing in the big guns. Y'all remember that one guy? <laughs> Man, okay, I've heard of failing upwards, but seriously, all you have to do is be a white guy made of cardboard who showed up a couple times in the background and you still have a higher rank than the black woman on the bridge. Stupid 60s. Unfortunately for them, Kirk and Spock were immediately killed too, and they just kept beaming down their highest ranked people until Sulu's goofy plants were in charge of the ship. And even then, Uhura was still not allowed to take command. Report, mister. I am only picking up physical impulses from the three of them. Let me adjust the antenna I have hidden in my hair to strengthen the signal. I told you to do that. I'm the captain. Ugh, no. This is fun, though. It's great that Chekhov dressed as Frankenstein for Halloween. It's festive. Hey, speaking of which... Yep, I know how that goes. You forget to clean up a few crumbs and all of a sudden you're swarmed with floaty witches and turtlenecks. Spock. Comment. It's very bad poetry, Captain. Two stars on Yelp. <laughs> Show us the crappy castle and not the CGI. How am I supposed to make lazy jokes about effects done 53 years ago if you keep ruining it for me with effects done 14 years ago? <coughs> Spock, it's a furry baby. What? According to my readings, Captain, this creature has reached critical levels of adorable. I'm an apex predator. Permission to cuddle it, sir? <coughs> Take me seriously. Three witches. What appears to be a castle and a black cat. Man, if we didn't have characters redundantly telling us about what's been happening, this episode would be 10 minutes long. Kirk does manage to shoehorn in a Halloween reference, though. It's really natural. If we weren't missing two officers and a third one dead, I'd say someone was playing an elaborate trick or treat on us. No one says it that way. The captain and the others simply stop registering. Looks like we're in a hairy situation. I mean, oh jeez. Things are looking pretty serious in the creepy castle. In fact, the episode might actually get to a point soon instead of having people wander down hallways and state what they see in front of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I 
man, I, I know they've shown us the move step by step, but I just don't think this dance is going to take off. Our crew is in a pickle. Judging by the classroom skeleton with the wires and everything, our boys are going to need to get out or perish from that stinking curse. Dungeons. Curses. Skeletons and Iron Maidens. Okay, seriously, enough. As noted by Kirk, these things are all strangely Earth-related for an alien planet. Spock surmises that this all relates to the things man fears the most, i.e. silly haunted house decorations. What terrifies Kirk the most, however, is Scotty and Sulu with phasers. Fuck off! They're on the drugs! Look at that, they're hardly blinking at all, says McCoy. Neither did Jackson, just before he collapsed. How would you know? He was on the ship for like two seconds before that happened, and you weren't even there. Well, anyway, best get to punching! Stop! <laughs> oh man, yeah, this is definitely what man fears the most. A villain taken straight out of Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. This is Karab, and he's a space wizard, I guess. Look, just go with it. Oh yes, we know who you are. All of you. Don't win my precious, huh? Leave me out of this, old man. Living in a castle on an abandoned planet with no one for company but your hypnotized slaves and your cat dressed as a wizard? This guy is living the dream. There are ancient Earth legends about wizards and their familiar demons in animal form sent by Satan to serve the wizard. Well, it just sounds kind of silly when Spock says it. At least Next Generation kept their wizards in their novels. Anywho, Karab doesn't know about Trick or Treat. What he does know, however, is how to be a good host. And then they had a wonderful time. The end. <laughs> what the hell? I can't eat this. Let's face it, dinner is ruined. <laughs> Was the cat walking on a piano in there? That's when... <laughs> Karab's partner, uh, Sylvia, shows up. Karab and Sylvia, the classic team-up. And I must say, Sylvia's hair-to-head -head ratio would put a drag queen to shame. She explains that they hypnotize people through enough exposition, jewels to the face! Unfortunately, Sylvia has a tiny Enterprise, and she can use that to destroy the real Enterprise, just like she destroyed Deadmeat, who she presumably also made a tiny model of. You can't think a man to death. Not while watching this episode, no. Well, it seems they're at an impasse. Kirk with his phaser, the wizard couple with their near limitless powers, or as Kirk says, telekinesis. Telekinesis? Karab wants them gone, Sylvia wants them to stay so she can torture them. These two are opposites, and that's what makes their marriage work. In order to prevent any rescue attempts, they've placed a shield around the Enterprise. This, of course, leads to DeSalle's big moment. I heard someone breathe in a way that indicated I wasn't in charge. I'm in full control. I'm the captain. No one said you weren't. You're on report. Maybe we can't break it. But I'll bet you credits to Navy Beans we can put a dent in it. I, I bet you credits to Navy Beans? Credits to Navy Beans? What is that? Navy Beans? <laughs> I, I can't get over this. In an episode featuring space wizards, I'm most confused by this idiom. I bet you credits to Navy Beans, DeSalle spent his days at Starfleet Academy with a permanent wedgie. Who the hell are you, DeSalle? Spock, my pants aren't high enough for this. Damn, they got McCoy with the music sting hypnosis. Meanwhile, Karab and Sylvia are fighting about, you know, alien stuff. Lots of unnecessary close-ups are used to demonstrate the intensity of this argument, because Sylvia's just getting way too into this, and Karab didn't want to torture people, he just wants to sit around in silly robes, petting the cat he made with his mind powers. He longs for the simple life. If they keep going around torturing people, I bet you credits to Navy Beans nothing good will come of it. A woman should have compassion, but I forget you're not a woman. Oh, don't use that sexist crap on me. A woman can be just as compassionless as a man. Hashtag feminism. These aliens come from a world without sensation, and Sylvia bets credits to Navy Beans that power feels pretty good, and Kirk can tell her all about it. That's when Kirk realizes he can play to his strengths here by using his incredible sex appeal. Smocks look so sexy on you. And how do you get your hair so crunchy? <laughs> Why don't you simply probe my mind and get what you want? 
Slow down, Kirk. You're only on the first date and you're already talking about probing. Uh, so I guess this is just the Kirk foreplay power hour now? I can't believe it. Another one's fallen for Kirk. She has no issue with torturing and killing whoever the ding dang heck she wants, but damn it, he's just too pretty. Just for once, Kirk would like to be appreciated for something other than his body. You like what you see. Uh, not now. Good, you're back to normal. Let me place my fists on my hips in approval. And now she knows what an erection is. I don't see any change. It's there, Lieutenant. All right. You know, after some thought, I feel like we've really lost sight of the mission here. I, I, I don't even really know how we landed on this haunted house thing. We're, we're just... We're, we're just super bored. So after Sylvia made those moves on Kirk, enough is enough. Karab sets Kirk and Spock free, and oh how Spock has contributed to the episode so far. As long as something incredibly silly doesn't pop up along the way, they should be able to make it to freedom. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing a trick or treat on us, all right. Why a cat? A cat is the most ruthless, most terrifying of animals. As far back as the saber toothed tiger. Hey, yeah, I know you got an itchy trigger finger, Kirk, but the guy standing next to you has godlike powers, so maybe, uh. Maybe you should let him take care of the giant cat. Yeah. I'm a Halloween miracle! Bow down to your kitty overlord! <laughs> I'd kill to hear the captain's log on this one. Do you think Starfleet ever got sick of Kirk shit? Did anyone ever believe his insane stories? I'll bet credits to Navy Beans, they think he's making everything up. Aw, shame about Karab. If it helps, I think this is how he wanted to go out. Crushed under a door by a giant cat. Oh, look at the little posies! Mint juleps! Now who's the fan favorite, Spock? Take away my lines, will you? Trick or treat, motherfucker. Face the wrath of my stunt double. Oh no, a door. Take that, you southern bastard! As you might have suspected, the space wizards don't really have any magic powers. It's all a bunch of alien whatever the hell amplified by the wand, which is a transmuter. Blah, 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 okay, whatever, it's destroyed now. And the space wizards were, uh, peacock puppets? <laughs> okay, that, that's not it, right? How, how is that something without substance? What are we even looking at? <laughs> <laughs> but, but Kirk totally made out with one of those things. And presumably, DeSalle launched himself into space in search of credits and navy beans. The end. I would not call Cat's Paw a successful trick-or-treat, but I did enjoy myself watching it. There's certainly been sillier episodes of Star Trek, but it did have some delightfully ridiculous moments. From the space wizards, the giant cat, to Chekhov's hair, to acting Captain What's-His-Face. Everyone put in their usual 100%, probably more than this episode deserved, and that's why it still came off as endearing. If you're looking for something to watch this Halloween, I'll bet you credits to Navy Beans you'll have a good time with this episode.